Hey, uh, welcome and thank you for joining the group presentation today. Um, the Emmys provide an understanding of why and how smart factories are changing the face of manufacturing. Uh, we will also provide an investigation and evaluation of the industrial revolutions along with the characteristics and technologies of smart factories. Um, as industry leaders, an assessment of the uh, implications of moving to an industry uh, 4.0 and anticipation of the likely features of a fifth uh, industrial revolution are considered. Methods used to compile this work include research, industry knowledge and experience, along with uh, peer discussion and teamwork. Um, we'll be taking slices through the paint shop, uh, assembly, leather shop and wood shop, uh, before coming to conclusions and group recommendations. Uh, our, our experience today is that the major impacts of the Industrial Revolution have increased urbanisation, wealth and health. However, there is a downside for those urban centres and in terms of a global response. There has been an uptake, but now a backwash as lessons are being learned. Uh, cyber physical systems, architecture for 4.0, based manu uh, manufacturing systems such as smartware, virtual reality uh, are being tr trialled, but no conclusion has yet been drawn. Organisational impact is significant and change management methods should be planned, open and collaborative. Uh, when transitioning from 3.0 to 4.0. Uh, Near-term manufacturing change uh, will be technological in terms of electrification and increased smart automation, but still critically coupled to continued handcraft bespoke elements expected of Rolls-Royce smart cars. Uh. Good afternoon. For this presentation, the smart factory is one that implements advanced manufacturing techniques and is characterised by digitalisation, analytics, big data, also network communications, um, IoT, the Internet of Things, also cyber physical systems, uh, which comprises of interactive, digital, analog, physical, and human components. Okay, um, what I'd like to do is take a little bit of a step, step back in time before. I'll go into detail in our areas of Rolls Royce motor cars within the paint shop. There have been four industrial revolutions over the past last 350 years. The first was 1784, and the second, um, 1870, and the third, 1969, and the latest is 4.0. 4.0, um, this con uh, concept trends towards automation, data exchange, and in manufacturing te technologies, what we know as smart factories. Over the last five to ten years, the paint of the Rolls cars, motor cars, has seen an introduction of smart te technology characteristics. Although, as yet, this has not led to a, a full smart factory. Um, new roles have been created within the paint shop due to the application of robots going fully automated. The associate used to apply that used to apply the paint by hand to the car body have been retrained to maintain the robots, their skill set, was, skill set now is far greater than um, due to the complexity. Paul. The paint shop is moved from quality control to quality insurance. It utilises work walk, adhering to our group standards of processes and game standards, and deep dive problem solving. This has helped in preventing mistakes and defects being delivered to our customers. The system that we use to record defects um, seen within the, in the paint layers is called FMS. This is reported by our associates whilst they are carrying out their processes in real time. Part of the process supporter's role is to run data reports from an FMS, identify any trends and problems, solve the top five issues. So the paint shop is able to forecast the future build constraints, which can include heavy bespoke content, two tones to matte painted cars, cars as these types of complex customer requests have a longer process time. By using SAP to establish the future build, we are able to identify the peaks and troughs of complexity and flex our cross-trained associates to assist in either two-tone or um, within our second primer line. One of you can stand on this side. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to look at the factors leading to the fourth industrial revolution and the characteristics of a smart factory. 
Um, as you can see on this slide, we've got three topics, emerging technology, science and connectivity. So in terms of the paint shop, obviously the old technology was hand painted, you know, it's pneumatic, using air. Um, as te technology is now advanced, automations come in, robotics, using Estabel in particular, Rolls-Royce motor cars, which is um, negatively and positively charged paint. Obviously that lowers VLCs, reduces waste, obviously that reduces costs. Um, we'll see the science behind that, market, changing trends, Mac Clearcoat is now a, a big thing. Initially Mac Clearcoat could only be applied on the whole vehicle by hand. Now with smarter robots, better paint systems and technology science with the actual paint, we're able to apply it by hand, which is much better. Uh, connectivity, so in terms of the paint shop there's limited connectivity in terms of uh, being a completely connected and, and, and wireless um, system using the internet all linked together. Um, though we have, there is some um, areas that are fully connected or connected in a sense. So we have the overview of the whole of the whole paint shop where we can click and look at the options for the cars, look at the due dates of the cars. But it's, it isn't as advanced as it should be. If we just step on the other side of the factory into assembly though, RFID uh, is now more prevalent where we can actually track a whole car through the whole system uh, much, much better. Uh, and then practical support. So this is basically the support that, the, that these um, compute systems can give us in terms of decision making. Um, as you can see, this is an overview of the paint shop. Previously, so if we go back to like five or ten years ago, very much paper based, manually moving the cars throughout the system. Now we've got a full overview of the area of the cars, where cars have been in there too long, so like an and on. So if it's been in there over process, it'll go red. If it's on process, it'll be green. Um, and really, really helping aid in those decision makings and prioritising cars through the system. So could you just go back to the previous slide? Because I think Paul's got a comment on the previous slide. That's not your note? Yeah. Um, energy uh, consumption has become uh, a focus within the paint shop. To give you some examples, within the last six years, the introduction of LED lighting has been introduced into the paint shop, replacing outdated tube style pattern lighting that used more energy and offered poor lighting compared to LED lighting. The impact has led to a reduction in energy usage. Usage, Gas and electricity and water consumption are monitored by our in-house energy consumption dashboard. Further energy and environmental savings have been made by physical motion sensors that turn the lights on and off and associates enter, enter um, such areas as water bays, polished bays and meeting rooms. Um, a further example is the plastics oven and cooler used to be running 24-7. This is now controlled by a PLC that monitors not only temperature but also humidity. With this system in place, a timer has been introduced that when the oven and cooler are not in use, idle, it switches off the gas. Also between uh, 14, 30 and 6, uh, 6 o'clock in the morning, this system is completely shut down. Um, due to not running the late shift, this has saved a massive £57,000 per annum. A further reduction in energy consumption was the replacement of the main boot oven and, cooler, oven and coolers. The new system is called a through run oven, and at the end of the process, there is a cooler. This has not only reduced process time, but has lowered our VO2 and CO2 emissions, and, and it also recirculates the exhausted heat to assist in heating the plant shop. Okay. <clears throat> so, move on to the cyber physical uh, technology, Shape and Industry 4.0. So if we just look at the CPPS architecture, again, within Rolls-Royce, we're not, it's not fully integrated. Um, although there has been trials along these lines with uh, lifting equipment, um, gloves, various um, you know, cyber physical production, things that can help work man with uh, automation. And they have the capability in the long term to increase production and uh, improve quality. Um, Uh, 
artificial intelligence. So, although there's nothing in the paint shop before I touched just in the presentation on artificial intelligence, and it's becoming much more prevalent in Rolls Royce and BMW. So it's not just about an autonomous car. Um, it has many impacts, uh, like driving features, cloud services, um, driver monitoring. They get automatic braking systems, um, gesture control, uh, and tiredness monitoring. As Steve mentioned, there are many benefits um, of implementing CPPS. Um, is that the concept allows an increase in productivity, production efficiency, and product quality, which is controlled and monitored by computer-based algorithms, which are a process set of rules that are following calculations in some deep dive problem solving, which we are seeing in computer-based programs. The benefits that have been seen within the paint shop with the implementation of CPPS of the installation of paint application robots that interact with each other and program logic control, PLC. This is also can be referred to as cybernetics, which is the communication control of machines. Uh, and lastly, so another um, technology which is shaken in 4.0 is Wi-Fi Direct. So it allows for two, two devices um, to be linked together without requiring a wireless router. We have this in, uh, not so much in the paint shop, but it is influence on the paint shop. Um, at the end of line, where we have to strip and rebuild cars, paint, paint strip and rebuild, um, the cars have to go through a, a, a set uh, coding and diagnostics to make sure everything's plugged in after a rebuild. Um, we're using this technology, it allows us to do this coding from anywhere within the factory plugged into the car, but it's worked for the wireless system. Um, gives us that ability to have cars in different areas and still carry out the rework after paint. Thanks, Steve. Within the paint shop at Rolls Royce Motor Cars, the recent advances in information technology have been seen using wireless and <coughs> As an example, Light Fidelity Wi-Fi is widely used with our handling robots in application. They communicate with the application robots, light emitting dials for data transmission for robot positioning preferences. A further example of an information technology is Thread. Although not used in the paint shop, it's also a wireless networking protocol using IP data that's been developed specifically to support the Internet of Things. Um, one of the quotes from this, uh, one of the um, reference of the Internet Thread is a low power wireless mesh networking protocol based on the universally supported Internet Protocol IP and built using open and proven standards. Thread enables device to device, device to device, and device to cloud communications and reliably connects hundreds or thousands of products, including mandatory security features. Thread networks have no single point of failure, can self heal, and reconfigure when a device is added or removed and are simple to set up and use. Um, I say so. Next topic will be transitioning from industry 3.0 into 4.0. Looking at uh, three um, topics within this. So storage. Obviously, data storage is now uh, a big, a really big part of that transition. Data is now uh, you can have much bigger capacity for much much cheaper price. Um, and this data can be fed into systems. Uh, so like as algorithms to improve processes. You've also got the need for integrated security, so competitive market, lots of information that needs to be end-to-end -end encrypted. Um, it's, you know, it's intellectual property that can't get into the wrong hands. And another topic that needs to be considered is also the skills gap. So you've got automation, which is taking away all the low-hanging fruit, these easy processes that can be done easily by automation. But there needs to be a, a, a real, um, almost like one eye from businesses to look at the ever-changing manufacturing environment and what they're going to do with that skills, the skills that would maybe do in that easy job and how they put them into the more variable, more uh, specific roles and also roles that maybe are incorporated with automation now coming into the, into the factory. <laughs> Uh, 
The collection of data management in the paint shop at Rolls-Royce Motor Cars is vital to the ongoing success and improvement of processes. That is gathered from real-time live actual data from robot programmed PLC issues to real-time measurement sensors. Within machinery such as air handling units, three-run oven, temperature sensors, sensors that monitor vibration in T-car um, systems detecting early signs of wear. The introduction of Industry 4.0 has seen that smart factories are connecting devices, machines and data. They are creating their own industrial internet of things. This is helping companies grow and opening up new opportunities. The transition from Industrial 3.0 to 4.0 has enabled companies to run factories automatically. This has led to improved performance and customer satisfaction. Okay, so just uh, within, obviously, the transition is networking standards, so we spoke about storage and data, IEC 61784, uh, which is a product for specific communications, um, used to design the devices involving communications in the manufacturing process control. And you've got EN 50159, which gives a series of threats and a list of possible defences against those threats. And IEC 62280, which gives the basic requirements needed to achieve safety related communication um, between the safety related equipment and the transmission system itself. And I think you've got a comment on a standard as well, Paul. I have, yes, very much so. So from 3.0 to 4.0, um, a standard's come out called ISO 10218. This describes the specific requirements guidelines for the safe design and proactive measurements, measures and information for use of industrial robots. It also describes basic hazards associated with robots, robots and provides requirements to eliminate, reduce the associated risks. Although saying that though, that from having a fully automated robot, the necessity for people to go in there whilst it's live and spray has been taken away. So the, the risk is far less. Um, so the transition from 3.0 to 4.0 has seen the reduction in human intervention this, is had, this has led to far less safety issues. Okay, look at our uh, final topic, so futuristic trends, which are now in manufacturing and leading to industry 5.0. So we've got augmented reality. Um, the possibility here is that we can use a holographic overlay, certainly within the paint shop, it's such a craft be able to have that technology to then overlay what you're looking at and what you're seeing will be really, uh, really important going forward. Um, we've got obviously all the automation technologies that uh, are pushing us towards Industry 5.0. Um, you know, intelligent, intelligent systems that gives more creativity, uh, creativity, more pre precision with our manufacturing and in productivity, especially in those repetitive jobs that we spoke about earlier. And then we've got the customer as a contributor, so it's, you know, we're looking at more agile operating um, around what the customer needs and what the customer requires in its products and working with them much more closely. So, from a 5.0 um, aspect, emerging technologies include autonomous manufacturing, self-driving cars, mass personalization, new materials, upskilling of people, 3D printing, virtual argument, augmented reality and their abilities. To recap, Industry 4.0 is more about <coughs> connecting operational chains to generate more value. In manufacturing, the goal was to reduce waste and um, improve productivity operations and make better use of systems and strategies, whereas Industry 5.0 is about reintroducing the human touch to modern manufacturing process and systems. Collaborative robots, also known as cobots, will merge the human touch with modern technology and equipment. Cobots will work alongside their human colleagues, improving processes and productivity, in essence helping the human complete their work. Hopefully it will enhance human-based craftsmanship by increasing speed, accuracy and precision of output. The use of collaborative uh, robots will allow human workers to still give their personal care to items such as bespoke crafts. This will enable companies to train and develop associate skills which will obviously continue their craft. So just 
from those four points, conclusions? Paul? Let's see. So in conclusion, although smart factories are changed in the face of manufacturing, within Rolls-Royce motor cars it is still a display craft to which we are finding it increasingly difficult to, to recruit new associates. We have to re-evaluate re the workforce as new technologies, uh, being robots, are introduced. This could mean upskilling or retraining associates in more technical roles. Um, obviously, the, the potential to do that is through, well, we have two routes, we have uh, artificial intelligence and <coughs> augmented reality, as we touched on earlier. We think the future continues to be um, human and machine combined. I think certainly within the paint shop, that craft element means artificial intelligence isn't where it needs to be to, to do that. So I think having the augmented reality overlaying human, with a human um, is definitely the future within the paint shop. Um, that's it. Uh, so thank you very much for that. There's, uh, I don't have any questions at this moment in time, but that was a very thorough and uh, informative presentation. Thank you very much.